Good evening, all epic lifters. I wanted to do a quick recap of my, my uh, rigorous and intense uh, training cycle this week. This week was the best week I've had training in a very long time. I hit a PR almost every day. So I wanted to go over this week's highlights. This week was probably the best week I've had ever in, in the history of me training. I hit a PR, like I said, I hit a PR almost every single day. Uh, the only PRs I didn't hit, I didn't hit a PR on arms, I didn't hit a, I didn't hit a PR on shoulders, although I, I still lifted heavy. Uh, for arms, my goal is to be able to curl 135 for five. Epic based lifter mug, epically based and red pilled, epically based and red pilled lifter mug. As I was saying, this week was the best training week I've had since I've been training. So I started training almost 10 years ago. Uh, I made the mistake of falling for the high volume memes. I made the mistake of falling for the uh, low intensity high reps meme and uh, it cost me in the long run, okay? Honestly, it didn't cost me that much. I still made gains, I still made progress, but as far as strength went, uh, it was very minimum. I didn't make very much strength gains from the low intensity, high volume, uh, isolation sort of workout. But I started off high volume, and I built a solid base from that, you know, but I spent way too long uh, uh, kind of moseying by on high volume, okay? I spent way too long uh, suckling from the, from the teat of the high volume cow. And uh, I, I eventually milked that cow until it was completely dry and I was no longer making any real progress. A lot of reps, be sore, no size, okay? High volume really did not treat me well after six years of doing it straight, but uh, hey, you know, my fault doing it six years straight, not changing my routine. I know, gotta change it up a bit. So that's exactly what I did this year, uh, or actually late last year, I started focusing more on strength. And I started uh, trying to bring those numbers up, all right? And I, uh, by the way, I, didn't, I did zero compound work uh, for my volume, for my volume days, I did literally zero compound work. Uh, I would, well, I say literally zero, but I lied, okay? I did bench and I did squat, but they weren't priorities to me. I would squat at the end of my workout and I would bench if the bench was open, uh, but I usually did a lot of dumbbell work for the majority of, uh, of, of my early years in training. But moving on, so late last year, I started working more on strength, trying to get my numbers up. I thought, you know, man, I've been training for so long and I can barely, you know, I can barely bench uh, 275 for one. And so this year, uh, all of this year and, and, some, and the end of last year, I focused on bringing my compound movements up. And, uh, you know, I would just, I had no coach, all right? I did like literally zero coaching uh, for myself. I did zero planning. Uh, I didn't write any diets. I just lifted heavy and I went in and I had fun. And uh, for me, I made the most progress here in the home gym. Uh, I made more progress at my, in my garage than I ever have in a corporate gym. So for all of you out there, a little food for thought, corporate gyms may be killing your gains, okay? Maybe corporate gyms are killing your gains, all right? Food for thought, maybe, maybe corporate gyms are killing your gains. So I took the home gym pill uh, because I, I had the knowledge and the foresight uh, when, the, when the pandemic broke out in China, I knew it was coming here, all right? I could feel it in my bones, in my body, in my spirit was communicating and it was all, it was all telling me, uh, buy some home gym equipment. And this was before the lockdown. I think Texas didn't go into full lockdown until March. Luckily I had my equipment here uh, in about, you know, I had it here like at the end of February. And so I had a, I started off with just a uh, power rack 
and I did squats and bench in that. And uh, you know, I just went heavy and focused on the compound movements, did little accessory work here and there. Uh, and before you knew it, my squat, my bench, and my deadlift was, it was shooting up, all right? It was, it was going sky high, all right? I couldn't control it anymore. So my, my squat at the uh, beginning of this year started off uh, at about 350 for a hard one. Uh, if I was lucky, I could get, you know, maybe 365. Now, of course, I can do 350 for reps comfortably. Uh, and this week, I hit a PR of 415. All right, I hit a 415 squat for one. Uh, the depth is a little questionable, all right? I'll give you that. It's a little questionable, but I'm not competing, okay? So I don't care. I don't care about your depth. I don't care because I'm not competing, nor do I plan on competing. Uh, I just like to lift in my garage for fun, okay? Maybe, maybe a little crazy to you, all right? That might sound a little crazy, a little insane, but I like to lift in my garage for fun. And then, uh, so I hit 415 this week for one, which was a W, lifter, lifter W, okay? Epic lifter W, all right? And then, uh, and then on chest, I hit, well, I've, I've hit a PR uh, on chest. I hit a PR a few weeks ago. I got 320 for one. But this week, I hit a rep PR, 315 for two, and it felt good. I didn't record it, all right? So you just have to take my word for it. But I did record me doing, uh, I think, 320 or 325, one of those two. I can't remember uh, because it was on decline, which, you know, it wasn't, decline is cool to hit a PR. It's cool to lift heavy on decline, but nobody really cares, all right? Nobody cares. Who cares? Nobody cares, all right? Nobody really cares about decline. So I got 325 on decline, and then I also did the, the dumbbells uh, on incline. I did 110s for four, which is also a PR, but you know, I cared more about hitting the 315 for two and it feeling good than I did uh, for hitting the, the dumbbells on incline. Also, I hit, uh, I guess it was like, I was doing three, I was doing 295, uh, I did three sets of 295 for five and it felt easy, and then I hit the 315 for two. So that was kind of like a cool little, little uh, whatever. And then after that, uh, I hit 520 for one, it went up pretty easy. I've done it in the past, uh, but this time I, I, I really did it and it felt great and it went up easy. And, uh, and then, you know, it felt good, everything felt good after that. It was a great week, all right, a great training week. Now, I did chest yesterday and I can still feel it. My, my chest is a little fatigued from, uh, from hitting those insane numbers, all right? Insane numbers in the gym, all right? Honestly, if you can hit over three plates on anything in the gym, uh, you're looked at as like God tier lifter, all right? It's, especially in a corporate gym. If you can deadlift three plates in a corporate gym, you know, all the, all the normies are gonna sit there and they're gonna say, man, this dude is, he's killing it, all right? And you, maybe you are killing it, all right? Three plates, for some people, is a great, a great number, okay? Uh, no, no discredit to you if you can't hit three plates. You'll get there one day. But I'm just saying, in corporate gyms, if you can hit three plates on squat, uh, bench, or deadlift, you're like God tier mode. So keep that in mind if you wanna impress all the, all the corporate gym twinks, all right? If you want to go in there and you want to mog all, all the corporate gym, all the corporate gym goers, uh, just hit three plates and they'll be like, dang, this dude is killing it here, bro. All right, this dude, he needs, he's a pro. Okay, we have a pro athlete here in our corporate gym. But anyways, I got a little off track. Uh, then I did arms and arms felt great. I didn't hit a PR, but I did curl 135, uh, you know, which I've done. Uh, it didn't go up, it didn't go down, felt great. Shoulders, felt great. I didn't do OHP or anything like that. Uh, but anyways, it was a great training week. The greatest training week of my life, okay? Believe it or not, this was the greatest training week of my life, okay? My, uh, my life thus far, all right? Greatest training week of my life thus far. So more to come. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it easy this week because I hit a PR literally, like I said, almost every day. Uh, and it felt great, uh, but my body definitely uh, is fatigued from it, okay? It took a toll, 
and I can tell that I need to rest. I can tell that I need to chill for a little bit. I need to take a chill pill, all right? Maybe lift a little lighter. Not do any volume because that's cringe, all right? I don't do volume, all right, bro? I'm done with volume. I did it for like six years straight. I am so over volume. Volume is so boring to me, okay? Don't take my advice though. This, I'm just letting you know my thoughts, okay? I'm not a, I'm not a coach, I'm not certified. If you, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just letting you know what, what's working for me and what I'm doing, all right? I'm not saying you should do any of this because it might not work for you like it's working for me, okay? We're built different. I'm just built different uh, and you're built different too, all right? We're all unique lifters. Uh, in the special world, okay? So, like I was saying, I'm not, don't take my word for it, do your own research, okay? Do what works for you. Hitting a, hitting a one rep max every workout is probably not ideal, but I like doing it, okay? Uh, but I can tell when I need to stop, okay? Because if you do that every single time, uh, you will eventually hurt yourself, and I do not recommend that. That's one thing I can say you should not do. Although I've been doing it. So anyways, this was my, my recap of the greatest training week of my life. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope you learned a little something about me. I hope you learned a little something about yourself. And maybe you can apply these same principles uh, and these tactics to your training uh, this coming week. Thanks again for watching. We're out of here.